Hello, IML students. How are you doing today? Today, we're about to learn about what 4X is. I hope you're ready. Get your papers and your pens, and let's get ready to take some good notes, starting now. Before we get started, here's a little bit about myself. My name is Adeze Duncan, representing iMarkets Live. Some of you may know me from Forex 101 on IML TV. Also, I was an educator for 10 years, and now I'm here educating you on the facts and methods of Forex. In order to get started on this journey, you need to remember one thing and one thing only. I am a student, always. This is very important for you to remember and to remind yourself of often. You will hear me use this phrase frequently as a reminder that you are a student that is learning a skill that will pay you for the rest of your life. Make sure that you take your time and learn what you need to learn. Pace yourself. Do not compare yourself to anyone else's progress. Always keep a winning mind frame and you will do very well in this industry. Upon finishing this video, you should have a very good understanding of the following questions. Read through them quietly to yourself. As you are taking notes, make sure to pause this video in order to answer these questions. Did you know that you've already participated in the Forex market? Maybe you didn't know that, but when you've gone to another country and you brought your currency with you to exchange in another country, you've actually already participated in the foreign exchange market. Imagine that. Just by taking your currency and exchanging it for theirs and then upon leaving, re-exchanging, you have actually exchanged rates. So about these foreign exchange rates, this is the rate that buyers pay in order to exchange their currency. And to put it in a different way, this is the rate that you would pay when you take your currency and exchange it for whatever local currency you're trying to get. Um, but then when you go back to change your currency, you have to use that same exchange rate because it costs money. You're pretty much buying that, com that country's currency. And depending on the supply and demand for that currency at that particular time, it can change the rates. For instance, as we talked about with major uh, the market participants, if a certain currency is high on the demand list, and that means a lot of different um, uh, different participants are trying to get this foreign currency. If a lot of people are trying to get that, that means that that currency is high in demand. So what do you expect the exchange rates to be? They're going to be much higher. Okay. So then that means if you're going to that country, your rate is going to be higher that you would have to pay out of your pocket. Now, if you go to a country whose exchange rate or whose foreign currency, or excuse me, whose currency is not that high at that time, it's not, it's not a very high demand on it, then you're not going to pay as much for the exchange rate. And that's how that works. Now, this is why you should have by now seen major market participants. If you have not seen this, I strongly suggest that you stop. Don't even go any further in this video. Go back and watch the major market participants. It is eye-opening. It will help you understand who you're up against and how this can influence your trading. So to jog your memory about the supply and demand. Supply and demand is basically when you have a high demand in something, you can command a higher rate. When you have a low demand in something, then you can only command so much of a rate. So this goes back to the exchange rates. When when a currency's rate, or excuse me, when you can come, when there's a lot of demand on that currency, back to the market participants, when they are buying it up at a high rate, then you have a high demand and not a low and then a very low supply, which means you can command a very higher rate. When you have countries that are more are emerging and they don't have as much of a demand on them, then you tend to have a much lower exchange rate. So that's why when you go from one country to another and you're coming with a very high demand currency to a country with a low demand currency, that's why you have more buying power in that country. So on this screen right here, you have a look at live currency exchange rates. So if you're looking right now, you should be seeing them flicker. Some of them are changing, going back and forth. See that one just changed. See how they're changing? This is all because of the market participants constantly buying and selling currency live. This is happening right now. So that means when you go from one country to another, there's no guarantee that you're going to get the exact same exchange rate. Sometimes you'll get a much better rate. Sometimes you'll get a much higher rate than what you originally exchanged for. Just how big is Forex really in comparison to all of the other markets out there? So now you're looking at this graph. And it looks pretty large. There looks like a really big difference between what you see. As you see, the New York Stock Exchange, the one in the green, for those of you who can't see, 
That's $22.4 billion as an exchange. Then you have the, to- the Tokyo Stock Exchange, that's $18.9 billion that is exchanged on a daily basis. And then you've got the 7.2 London Stock Exchange, $7.2 billion is exchanged. Billion is quite a bit of money. Now, can you take a guess as to what you think the Forex market might be? How about Forex is a whopping $5.3 trillion per day exchanging industry, okay? Well, that's a pretty big number. Um, you should be very excited about that. Why is that? Because as those numbers, as long as those numbers continue to move back and forth, there's always potential for you to make money. All this talking about money being exchanged on a per daily basis makes you probably wonder, well, how do you actually profit in this Forex monster market? Let's put this in context that most people understand. Forex is just like real estate where you buy a property and then you hold it for a little while and then you turn around and sell it and then you make a profit. It's the same thing in Forex, except it's a much faster process. You buy into a certain currency, such as the euro, you hold on to it for a little while and then you turn around and you sell it for a different pair, such as the USD. As a result, you make money if your euros exchange rate went up while you held it. And depending on how much you bought at that time is going to determine how much you get paid off of that one purchase. So it's a lot like house flipping. And just to clarify, in case you don't know, when I say house flipping, I am referring to buying a house, holding it, and then turning around and selling it for a profit. Now you know what Forex is and how you can profit. Now, here's the thing. Until you learn the skills and the psychology of trading, you will be gambling. If you decide to jump into this market and you think that you know what you're doing, you have no skill, no technique, and you don't even realize or care two thoughts about psychology, I just need to implore and inform you that you are gambling and you are not using proper skill or proper risk management. So please let us teach you how to trade with confidence and not the false confidence that you got in the market, you had a couple good trades, and now you think you're all that. No, I'm talking about the kind of confidence that is backed up by skill, backed up by data, backed up by real official confidence. Learn this skill, guys, and get that money. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. For a chance to have more of an interactive experience where you can talk with me and I can talk with you, please visit me on IML TV. I am your Forex 101 trainer, Adeze Duncan. See you in the next video. By now, you should have a good understanding of the following questions. Read them quietly to yourself, answer them, and when you are finished, go on to the next video in Forex Foundation 1 series. My name is Adeze Duncan, and remember, I am a student, always.